Thank you. So I'm going to talk about how to do pre-hospital research. So doing pre-hospital research is painfully complicated, and you will find it long between your high-impact publications. So the helipad is, as you know, full of wonderful doctors and paramedics with a strong taste for practical work, making the academic in a flight suit to feel quite lonely. Now, I find it really hard work to combine clinical with academical activity, so why do I do it? I do pre-hospital research because I'm a strong believer that patient pathophysiology should dictate our strategies of care. I'm a strong believer that care should be delivered where it influences outcome the most. I'm a strong believer of evidence-based practice and that this principle also pertains to the pre-hospital environment. I'm a strong believer that we should be critically appraising our own practice in order to identify areas of improvement, areas of harm, and areas where we can improve cost effectiveness. Now, did you know that you cannot automatically extrapolate in-hospital evidence to the field? And did you know that the pre-hospital environment has different requirements when it comes to kit composition, diagnostic capacity, and crew composition? And did you know that about 5.8 million people die from injuries every year, that this accounts for approximately 10% of the world's deaths? And did you know that pre-hospital research is significantly underfunded and that the quality of evidence is considered weak? So how can you contribute to build a better evidence base for your practice? How can you do pre-hospital research? Let's break it down and look at the different components. So first of all, you have to answer relevant and patient-oriented questions, questions that pass as our so what filter, like, for example, whether pre-hospital blood transfusions will have impact on outcome. And then you have to identify interventions that we can take from the hospital and then to the street, and then we need to test that intervention for feasibility and impact on outcome, like we see for Freboa. And then we have to acknowledge that in the pre-hospital arena, injuries and diseases are evolving and may not display the classical features as you would see in a fully established disease. And that's why it's so important for us to establish good indications and contraindications and to perform diagnostic test accuracy studies as you see with the InfraScanner. But before you embark on your research project, you need to know a bit about the literature, the recent and seminal papers. So I recommend all my PhD students to perform a systematic literature review, a process where you learn about identification of literature, data extraction, quality appraisal, and meta-analysis of data and literature you need to know anyway. So, but the crux of your research project will be the study methodology. And if you look into the hierarchy of evidence, you will see that at the very bottom you will have expert opinion, at the very top, you will have the randomized controlled trial. So I think that you should aim high, but you should not dismiss the lower quality of the science. So if you look into, like, for example, case series, you might have services with a very, very high volume that might identify patterns of very rare cases that the smaller services will struggle to see. An example could be the sobering depiction of the pediatric hanging as managed by London's ambulance. And the majority of the studies we do will be observational. And if you design your observational study really, really well, we may talk more about causation rather than just association. So, but then you have the randomized control trial, the trial that takes out all the systematic skewness. So many would say that this is very hard and it's impossible. I say it's hard, but it's not impossible. It just requires a very good research framework or funding you need to have good data collection with good data input, good data output, and then you have to have automatic data capture. You need to have experienced researchers, and you need to have a long-term commitment. And I like to think that pre-hospital care is where cancer care was about 40 years ago when it comes to evidence base. But through systematic hard work, we can lift that evidence base up to where it should be at the very top, because that is what our patients deserve it should be. So, but then you have the statistics, because you can't do any research without understanding a bit of statistics. And if you do observational research, like the most of us will do, you need to understand regression analysis. 
But for many of us, it's not feasible to be both a clinician and a mathematician. So that's why we ask our statisticians for help. And the statisticians will do a much, much greater job if they are included earlier in the process rather than later to resuscitate a futile data set. And then we need to talk about publication bias because I think there's a strong tendency of just publishing positive studies. And being an editor of a scientific journal, I really find those neutral or even evidence of harm studies to be of interest. Although they, they might not be as sexy as a study with strutting p-values, they are very, very important to publish for the sake of the safety of our patients and for the improvement of our services. But science will never lead to any change unless it's properly communicated. And SMAC is a very strong advocate for foam, and in some ways in opposition to the conservative scientific establishment. Now, I think that there is a role for both two worlds, both the editorial peer review and the unmoderated debate, as you will see here at SMAC. So I would think that the both of these worlds need to merge science fit education in order to improve outcome. And one thing would be to have solid, good discussions on Twitter. So not only do you have to be an experienced clinician, a designer of good hypotheses, and also a constructor of good research methods, an analyzer of data, an interpreter of results, a good, decent writer, but you also have to be a communicator of science with a word limit of 140 characters. <laughs> no wonder why it's so fascinating. It's no wonder why it's so vital for our services. No wonder why it's so impossible to be perfect at doing pre-hospital research. But for us to practice evidence-based medicine, and for us to seek and to preserve limited resources, we should seek evidence where it's lacking, because it's not a dichotomy between no and do in our quest to establish critical care without walls. Thank you. <laughs>